welcome you to my birthplace. It's the nation's capital, the District of Columbia, the seat of the U.S. government. And I'm glad that you've come along today for a tour. I want you to see the sites, the landmarks, the monuments, the iconic places in the home of go-go music. It is Washington, D.C. There's no other city like the Chocolate City. Come on, let's go for a tour. Let's see the sights. on the National Mall. This is the space between the U.S. Capitol and the Washington Monument. Presidents are inaugurated on the steps of the U.S. Capitol. My family was so blessed to be here when President Barack Obama took his oath of office both times. The first time we stood all the way back by the Washington Monument, but the second time we were blessed to be right on the lawn of the U.S. Capitol. What a blessing it was to see our first African-American president inaugurated into office. If you don't know how to get around the city, there's always a tour bus nearby. One of the things that I did when I was a teenager was that I actually was a tour guide on a bus. Yes, I was really too young to be working, but I learned all about the city, and I was a tour guide showing people from out of town the sights in the city. So I'm really excited to show you the sights of my city today. The White House, it's the people's house, built by slaves, for the people, by the people. We're here at the seat of government. This is where our president lives. Hey, President Biden, how you doing? <laughs> president Biden and Dr. Jill Biden, they're probably inside. You wanna stop in and say hi? <laughs> the National Museum of African American History and Culture. This museum was opened in 2016 by President Barack Obama. I remember when this museum was being thought about and even before it was built, my father talked about it and he became one of the founding sponsors for it because he believed in African American history so much that he wanted the next generation to be able to enjoy it. Matter Plaza is located on 16th Street Northwest, directly across the street from the White House. Two blocks have been dedicated to those who've lost their lives. We always want to remember them, and we will say their names. Martin Luther King Jr. Woo, he is here. Yes, his statue is right here in Washington, D.C. Son of Atlanta, civil rights icon, drum major for justice, the pioneer of the modern social justice movement, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Nobody like him. University. It's my alma mater and I'm pleased to share it with you. I spent six of my best years right here at Howard. Yes, six. Four as an undergrad and I came back for a master's degree because I loved it so much. Howard is such a wonderful school and has special significance for my family. Both of my parents graduated from here. In fact, my mother was pregnant with me when she graduated from Howard. So it's in my blood. I had to come to Howard. It's a wonderful HBCU, and I'm so glad to share it with you today. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of my hometown. Washington, D.C. is a wonderful place. If you've never visited, I hope you'll take some time and come and see the sights in the city that is the nation's capital. Good morning, new birth, and welcome to worship. We're so glad to be here this morning in the house. 
house of the Lord. God is in his holy temple, and he's right there where you are as well. This is the day that God made for you. He made it for us, and we're going to worship the Lord together. We are here in the sanctuary of the Lord, and where you are, it's the sanctuary too. Come on, let's give God praise in his house. Hallelujah. Glory to our most high God. This is the day that God has destined for us to have a house party. You know, Newbert's been on a home invasion tour. We've been going from city to city all over the country, showing you where some of our leaders are from. And today, it is my joy to show you my hometown, Washington, D.C. I'm Pastor Carla Stokes. I'm the pastor of Ministries and Outreach right here at Newbirth, And I'm so glad to be here in Atlanta today. But wherever you are, it's special too. And God has a blessing stored up for you. We're going to worship God together. We're going to have a wonderful time of ministry. But listen, when there's a house party, there's always a host. There's somebody who takes care of everything to make sure that everybody has what they need and have a good time. Our host is none other but the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He is our God and he's in control. I don't want us to come into his house and ignore him. Can you help me lift him up? Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you praise. There's nobody like you. We adore you. We reverence you. We thank you for welcoming us into your house, God. We declare that this is the house of the Lord and that we have made our hearts your home. God, we want you to have your way today. Lord, we declare this is the day of salvation. This is the day of deliverance. This is the day of the great move. This is the day of revelation. This is the day that the message finds a place in the life of somebody who is needing just what our pastor is going to preach. And so, Father, before we go another further, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you the praise in advance for great results. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I know you're blessing God right where you are, and I'm glad that we get to worship together. You know, it's great when you're at home. You can sing in the shower and you sound real good. You can pray on your knees all by yourself. You can read the word by yourself, but there's something special about corporate worship. And today, we're all together, and I'm so glad to have standing beside me my sister, not just my sister in Christ, but my biological sister, Elder Marcia Stokes. Would you help us pass the peace? It would be my honor. I tell you, good morning, New Birth. It is such an honor to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. As my little sister, Pastor Carla Stokes said, this is a house party because we're in the house of the Lord. Listen, we're from the DMV, DC, Maryland, and Virginia, and we thought we knew what a house party was because we knew how to turn up when we got to the house. We understand that Chicago, Miami, Los Angeles, Detroit, they all had house parties too. But when you got to a house party, you know what you had to do? You had to check out and see who was there. You had to do some shout outs. You had to talk about what neighborhood you were from. And so this is what we want to do during Pass the Peace. We want you to chat and shout out somebody who's watching with you. We want you to go into the chat and shout out where you're watching from. We want you to get to know the people who are in the chat with you. Why? Because we're at a house party. And since we're at the house party, we might as well do it because this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let's pass the peace. Yes, God, it is the day that the Lord has made and we may as well give him the greatest praise. Hallelujah, he's worthy this morning. We've come to lift him. We've come to magnify his name, make his name great. Can you shout in the room? Can you shout at home, in the kitchen, in the bathroom? Come on, let's give it to him this morning. Yes, Lord. Day, that the Lord has made, that the 
The reprise of that is, it's my season. I want you to lay your hands on yourself. This is a prophetic declaration. It is an affirmation of conviction of your own faith and belief uh, that I am believing on this Sunday in July that I ain't hating on nobody else. I'm not jealous of anybody else. I'm not in competition with anybody else. But as of this moment, I alert heaven and earth that it is my season. Come on, everybody, it's my season. It's my season. And it's my day. It's my day. A fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. It's coming my It's coming my way. It's a season. It's a season of power and prosperity. Come on, yeah. Here's an amazing thing. We just uh, started uh, in the middle of a pandemic. We opened up here on our campus, the Garden of Eden, uh, where we began planting fresh vegetables to try to contend with uh, food deserts that are a blight to so many of our communities around the country. So right on our campus, we're growing greens and okra uh, and so many other things. And I discovered only through this process, did you not know that 95% uh, of all fruits and vegetables are seasonal? 95% of all fruits and vegetables are seasonal. It means that there are some seasons, no matter what happens, it cannot grow. 
no matter what it is that you do, it is not going to grow in that season. But you just made a declaration to confound that. You said, I don't care what's going on. It is still my season. I um, am outraged and I am overwhelmed at the fact. Do you know what is not seasonal? What is not seasonal is onions are not seasonal. They'll grow all year, which is a reminder to us there'll never be a time where you cannot not cry. There'll never be a time where you will not not have to deal with pain. Onions are always in season. Amazingly, you don't even realize that the fruit that is always in season is never recognized for being what it is. That fruit that is always in season is tomatoes. I know that many of you thought it was a vegetable, but it is a fruit. And you ought to know, hear this, that anything that has a seed in it is a fruit. Uh, many of you do not have the fruit of the Spirit because you never plant a seed. Amazingly, my dear friends, I need you to uh, be abreast and apprised of that, uh, of what it is that uh, is always in season is bananas. Bananas are always in season, but unlike all of the other 12, bananas only live for seven days. They can only live for seven days, and some people try to beat the system. And do you know what they do? To try to make it last longer, they put bananas in the refrigerator. And when they put the bananas in the refrigerator, they darken quicker. Uh, their shape begins to change. Their color is lost. Here it is, but they're still a banana. They are those who have miscategorized you based off of what you look like. They have put you in environments and situations that are not normal to who you are. And still, the essence of your existence has not been contaminated with. In order for you to get to it, it has to be peeled. And many of you don't even realize that this pandemic has done nothing more than peel away what you did not need. It peeled away what was unnecessary. It peeled, hear this, what you in fact did not think you could live without. I want you to know that this is a season for you to have a fruitful life. And if you're going to have a fruitful life, there's got to be a seed connected to it. And so can you imagine that I am confounding everything that Benjamin Franklin put in the Farmer's Almanac? Because I believe for you, that in this same season that you plant is the same season you're going to get a harvest. That doesn't ever happen. But in this season, I believe it's going to do it. And who will it do it for? For those who are faithful of farmers. Faithful farmers understand it's cold, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm wet. This is draining me, but I'm still planting my seed. I'm doing it because I'm not looking for it for the condition it's in now. It's because prophetically I see what it is going to evolve into later. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop calling you tithers. I'm going to start calling you farmers. Uh, because farmers understand that I've got to plant my seed. But farmers hear this are peculiar about what soil it puts it in. Because I can't waste my seed. I am believing by faith for you that all of the farmers who are viewing us from uh, Kansas City, from California, from Canada, uh, from Catonsville, uh, from Florida, wherever it is that you are, I need you to know that the ground is ripe and that the blessing that's getting ready to hit your life is not seasonal, but it is going to be sustainable. And so right now on the thread, on the screen, is all of the prompts by which you can give. Uh, whether you're giving it through push pay, through text to give. Whether you're giving it through our own secure website. Whether you're going to mail it here to the church or drop it off. All I know is that a farmer has got to operate by faith. That I believe that what I am sowing is not going to come back the same way. But it's going to come back larger, better and tastier than how it left my hand. I want to pray over your gift. I want to pray over your seed. And might I pray over your harvest. I want you to lift that phone above your head. Even those of you who are in this studio space, lift up that phone above your head. I am believing that you will obstruct agricultural protocol. 
I am believing for you in accordance to your faith that the same season that you sow will be the same season that you reap. I am believing that your harvest is going to be 20, 40, 60, 80, even a hundred fold. I bless you and I believe for you that there will not be room enough to receive because that's the kind of God we serve. Those of you who are anticipating and expecting a harvest, would you clap your hands in expectation of what it is that I am believing that God is going to do. I, uh, I, I, I uh, for the past couple of weeks, have been circumnavigating around this series about uh, timing and time management and making sure that you are the best steward of your time. And I want to make sure that we maximize what it is that God has given us. Uh, one of the blessings that God has entrusted to new birth uh, is giving us an amazing timekeeper in Pastor Carla Stokes. Uh, she has uh, been absolutely operating in militaristic precision and understanding that the kingdom of God is at hand. And so a lot of what it is that takes place uh, out in the community and around the world, you may not know it, but the fingerprints of Carla Stokes are hit steadily around it. And so we appreciate her. I uh, not only appreciate her, but her incredible sister uh, who's been serving alongside her in ministry. Come on, let's give God some praise. Uh, those of you who are viewing, uh, you uh, over the last two and a half years have come to know me as uh, the pastor. Uh, but historians will have to put in the annals of time uh, that the first woman pastor of New Birth was Pastor Carla Stokes. Uh, and she navigated this ministry. She navigated this ministry with a shepherd's heart uh, and did what was needed and necessary to keep us afloat. I would not be standing if the grace of God was not on her life to pray us through and to move us into this moment and into this season. I'm telling you, it may be your time now, but don't forget the people who took time for you to be in the position that you're in. Whoever it is that made a sacrifice for you, I want you to celebrate them. I want you to give God praise for them. I want you to appreciate them on today. Because here's what I found out. Tomorrow is not promise. And so while it is that you still have time, don't just thank God for your time, but thank God for the time of those who went before you and prepare the way for whose time is coming behind you. I'm excited for what God has entrusted to me to give to you. So here's what I need you to do. I want you to tag somebody, text somebody, tell somebody. I wouldn't waste your time. You gotta go log on to New Birth right now. There's a word the Lord has given to the pastor that you need to hear, not just you but your family needs to hear it. Our marvelous music ministry here at New Birth are going to prepare the atmosphere and then we're going to hear what God has to say about your time. Pastor Stokes, we honor you this morning. Someone told us that we love Fred Hammond's song, so this morning we dedicate this song to you. Bread of life sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, bread of heaven. Everybody say it. Ah, everybody, why don't you worship with us this morning? Say it. You were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the ah, awesome ruler, awesome ruler, say it. Awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. Gentle redeemer. Everybody, come on, let's worship this morning. The living truth and what a friend we have in you. You are the living word. You are the living awesome word. Ruler. Awesome ruler. Gentle redeemer. Gentle redeemer. 
God with us. Come on, everybody, raise your hand. God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are the Jesus. Word. Jesus, come on, say it. Jesus, Jesus. Ah, uh, come on, say it. That's what we call you. Manger born, manger born, say it. Manger born, but on a tree, you died to save you. You are the living Say it again, word. Jesus, Jesus, say it, say it. Jesus, Jesus. Say it in your homes, raise it. That's what we call you. Manger boy. Manger boy. You died you to save humanity. humanity. You are, come on. Are it up. Jesus, Jesus. Everybody say it, say it, say it. That's what we call you. Jesus, Jesus. Just type the name Jesus. Come on, there is a name. I love to hear. I love to speak. It's worth it. Sounds like music to my ears. It's the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. 
at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. I want you to please type that name. Only if he made a way for you. Only if he's been better to you than you've been to yourself. Only if you know he's been a friend that sticks closer than a brother. If you are mindful that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. I want you to type that name even right now. I want to invite you to join me in Ecclesiastes 3. I'm grateful uh, for our fine arts ministry, enhancing our worship experience. Uh, always a treat when our liturgical dancers come and join us and um, be a part of our worship experience. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, and I want to look at verse 1 and clause A. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, clause A. There is a time for everything. Amen. There's a time for everything. I want to preach and I uh, want to challenge you to type it on the screen. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Every spring, over 100,000 celebrants of the timepiece industry converge into Switzerland for what is on my bucket list as Basel World. Basel World is the Global Watch Expo. It's situated on the Swiss, French, and German borders. On display, are the newest trends in fashionability from Rolex to breakthroughs in multifunctional operational watches. In 2008, the delegates were overwhelmed with the unveiling of the work of artisan Romain Jerome, who offered a moon dust DNA watch made from the fragments of Apollo 11. Each watch featured tiny craters filled with the dust from actual moon rocks. And the watch straps are made from uh, the spacesuits worn in the actual space station on the first flight to the moon. It was made available to anybody who felt compelled to write a check for $15,000. Right before the pandemic, in the last show that they had, Jerome offered a, uh, a new timepiece that was ticketed at $300,000. This watch that cost $300,000 Hear this, is called Day and Night. It's made from steel salvaged from the Titanic, specifically designed to combat the negative effects of Earth's gravity on a watch's accuracy. The plot twist, friends, is that this $300,000 timepiece, hear this, does not tell time. This $300,000 timepiece does not tell time. It doesn't display hours, minutes, or seconds. This $300,000 watch has a unique limited approach to measuring a chronos by splitting the universe into two fundamentally opposing sections, day or night. So this $300,000 watch can only tell you whether it's light outside or whether it's dark outside. While on the surface, that may seem strange, the truth is that many of us, that sums up the total of our experiences. Every moment of our lives, as we see it, is either very bright or very dark. You have moments when you're on uh, a natural high and then days when you are in an emotional lunar eclipse. 
You have uh, seasons when it feels like everything is coming together. And then you have days when you feel like you are falling apart. You have hours of euphoria only to be met with the exchange that throws seconds into an earthquake. You have instances where you want to give it all up and then you have a spurt of energy where you feel like you should fight for it. The days, the weeks, the months, and sometimes the years run together until you are imaginarily wearing a watch that only indicates day or night. I want you to know that watches that don't tell time are a sterling example of a functional product that directly violates its functional purpose. I better say it again. A watch that does not tell time is an example of a functional product that violates its functional purpose. And many of you who are listening to me in this moment are in danger of violating your assignment because you don't know what you're supposed to be doing with your time. Do you really think God gave you time to just surf all day shopping online? Do you think that the time you have now is just for you to blow balloons for a pity party you don't plan on attending? Do you think that the time you have now is just for you to find a straw for you to slurp up spilled milk? There's got to be more for your time but you are not operating in the fullest capacity of the time that has been given to you. A functionality induces a cost and out of it is birthed the expression that time is money. I want you to write this down please. Time is a cost. I've got to get that into your cerebral. Time is a cost. I want it in your subconscious. Time is a cost. I need it marinated in your spirit. Time is a cost. It takes a lot of time and effort for you to be who you are. And a lot of people are not prepared to pay the cost to be you. But they like the trappings of you. So they thought if they bought your clothes, if they emulated your hairstyle, if they mimicked your language, they would be you. But they do not know what it cost to be you. They see the product, but they have never seen the receipt. Do you know the price you had to pay just for you to be where it is that you are now? This was not free, but on the tabulated contract of your own experiences were heartbreaks and disappointments. There were high rises and low crashes. There were moments where you couldn't sleep, you couldn't stand yourself. It costs you to be you, but that cost is too expensive. Can I say it? It costs for you to just get out the bed in the morning. Knowing you don't know what you're going to face, you don't know what you're going to confront, and you don't know who you might have to fight. There's a cost for being who it is that you are. The idiosyncrasies of your own personality. The brokenness in the frailty of your own insecurity. The haunting ghost of something that has died but you refuse to bury. The memory that you keep reliving. The post-traumatic stress that you will not address. The unaddressed issues out of your childhood that have stalked you into your adulthood because you refuse to file a restraining order. The cost of what it means for you to just smile. People have no idea what it costs you to be vulnerable. 
to allow people into my space to let you have an intimacy with my own secrets and with my own fears the cause of me even sharing my dreams because when I told you was not the day I had it but I labored on it for years and for you to dismiss it and to minimize it as if it was nothing and you concealed it in a joke but it still stains me in my reality the cost of having to deal with the burial of somebody I never had time to forgive. The cost of never meeting up with who it is I wanted to love, but they didn't know how to receive love. The cost of having to shut down when naturally I'm an extrovert. The cost of having to be open when it is normal for me to be tight-lipped. There's a cost to it. And so you got to learn how to pronounce it and articulate it without overtones of arrogance. But you've got to get to the comfortability of telling people, you can't afford me. I'm not talking about dinner. I'm not talking about a trip. But can you afford the weight of what it means of being with somebody who has this level of anointing? This level of purpose. Do you know what it means to be with somebody that carries this level of assignment who has grace and irritability? You know what it's like because you fell in love with the outward presentation and can't handle when I shut down. Can you handle the price that people who don't know you will love you more than the people who do? Can you handle the cost that comes with your grace that people who don't know you hate you and can't make up a reason? There are costs affixed not just to your testimony, not just to your assignment, but to your dedication. Having a six-pack of abs requires putting in time for sit-ups. Means saying no to ice cream in the Starbucks. <laughs> Everybody wants them, but nobody wants the discipline or the time that is connected to it. The cost of success uh, blocks people from adopting success. So people are comfortable being miserable. Most people don't have the money to buy a Rolls Royce. They don't have the dedication to renounce cards or the time necessary in prayer to be consecrated. Yet Ivan Arpa, the CEO of the company that produces that watch that costs $300, said this, uh, uh, those who are willing to pay the price of $300,000 for a watch that doesn't tell time is a discerning customer, hear this, who knows what time already is. You can't afford me and you don't understand I'm not for sale. So if I've got to tell you what my value is, if I've got to tell you what my worth is, if I've got to tell you what my value is, then you are not in the market for my company. In 1978, a marketing company went to the headquarters of Rolls Royce and gave them a pitch on what it is that their commercials should look like. And the CEO of Rolls Royce said, we are not interested. And the representative from the marketing agency said, you haven't even seen the commercial yet. And the CEO retorted back, I don't need to see the commercial. People who are in market for Rolls Royce don't watch TV. When you know what you are, only five of y'all going to get it. When you know what you are and what you represent, you don't have to advertise. What you are called for and two will start seeking you out. And I declare and decree over somebody who is watching me right now. Do not get frustrated because you feel looked over and ignored. That's because those who looked over you are in the market for a Hyundai. 
but for what you carry. God is going to have people find your gift, find your talent, and find your skill set because you do not have to beg or plead to be acknowledged or to be seen, but you understand what God has for me. It is for me. Don't shout if you got a Hyundai Yonone, but if you know there's a Rolls Royce gifting that is trapped inside of you, you ought to thank God for a discriminating taste that is coming. Do you know what time it is in your life? In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says there's a season for everything. When Job was going through his own personal holocaust, his friends raised a congressional hearing and they suggested that this was God's punishment and that's why he was losing everything. Job had the insight to respond that the same God who blesses can also chastise. I want to say to you, please hear me well. And I know this is not for everybody, but I want to know, want you to know I'm talking to you. This is your season, not for stuff to be taken away. You've already outlived that season. This is the season that everything that was taken away is about to be restored. Everything that you have lost, God is getting ready to hitch it back to your life. This ain't your season for taking L's. This is your season of being more than a conqueror. Paul cried out to the Lord three times because there was a thorn in his flesh. I couldn't understand it, but uh, Bishop Brandon Porter out of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, said something that I want to co-op. Here's what Bishop Porter said. He says that the thorn had to be from God because the thorn had a point. I want you to know that whenever God is inflicting you with something, the way that you know God is behind it is if there was a point to it. You are not going through pointless pain, pointless opposition, or pointless testing. Everything that you're going through, hear this, if Paul had not gone through pain, he would have never been introduced to grace. He needed the thorn just so that grace could have a stage. He needed a thorn just so grace could get an introduction. In the cycle of ecology, everything, um, everything is, um, is necessary so that nature will know timing. Timing is not just a human enterprise. It is a global mechanism. So even the earth has got to know timing. You need it fall. Just as a reminder that people will change. You need it fall just to know that the hottest season of your life will not endure. You need it winter so that you would in fact be reminded that the unnecessary always dies. You need it spring so that you could have a picture of knowing that whatever you planted will come into full bloom. You needed summer so you could finally find a season where you enjoy what you worked for. (sighs) Many of you are blowing your summer because you never give yourself time to enjoy what you've worked for. You are so busy being in a winter mind frame That you don't give yourself permission to disconnect. You don't allow yourself the elasticity to realize I don't need this phone 24 hours. Can't be responsible for all of these emails. There's got to be a season where I can do for myself. And God says I want you in this summer to take a season of selfishness. All year long, you do for others. 
what are you doing for yourself? The time you are in has an assignment. The time you are in has an assignment. And I can't afford for you to miss the importance of it. Every time you are in is not hapless. Every time is purposeful. So the time that you were sick may have been the time that God could get you to sit still. The time you were in poverty was the time that God needed to make you more creative. The time you were in loneliness was so that you could discover how you could celebrate yourself. The time you were being single was so that you could fall in love with who you are. The time you were rejected so that you could figure out how to live without validation. The time you were miserable so that you could discover a word this generation doesn't know how to pronounce, contentment. The time you were unemployed was so that you could find time to birth entrepreneurship. And so because you understand that every moment of your time has an assignment, God is saying, don't waste your time. And all the more, anybody who's going to encroach on my time, I don't want you to waste my time with fake sympathy, with shallow compliments, with superficial encouragement. And, le and lucid compliments that you think I need. Sometimes when I don't see it, it means I don't need it. God needed me to go through a pandemic so I could get spiritual principles. What, what, what did you say? It took a pandemic for you to put a mask on your mouth. It took 16 months for you to guard your words. It took a pandemic for you to practice social distancing. To get you away from people he never wanted you close to. It took a pandemic for you to continuously learn how to wash your hands. Because he didn't want under your fingernails the residue of what you had to crawl out of. It took a pandemic for you to see that your job never saw you as essential. It took a pandemic for you to learn the people you actually live with. The time is getting ready to change. The time is getting ready to change and you're, you're getting ready to shift from victim to victor. The time is getting ready to change where... Um, you're going from sowing to reaping. The time is getting ready to change where you're moving from survivor to more than a conqueror. The time is getting ready to change where you no longer get weary in well-doing. The time is now coming where you've got to ask yourself, who will believe the report of the Lord? Have you been with us in this entire service? I am. Um, I shared with you when I greeted you the beginning of worship that um, all fruits are not seasonal. That bananas will change their texture but not change who they are based off of where they are. I told you that no matter what the time is, doesn't matter whether I'm in Argentina or Chicago, onions are always in season. But I, I wanted to... Um, to lay my anchor on uh, one last uh, fruit that is seasonless. And that fruit that is seasonless warrants my attention when I was reading Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And that, uh, that fruit is, uh, is an apple. And I'm trying to figure out, um, because there are some theologians and historians and anthropologists and agricultural scientists who suggest that in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't even an apple that Eve had, but it was a pomegranate. And those who would argue that don't even understand that pomegranates are just another form of an apple. Um, 
The apple is strange um, because nobody ever thinks about the timing of an apple. Is that it is sown into dirt. And while it is that it is sown into dirt, it can't even grow until what it is attached to grows. And so the apple can't grow if it is connected to a dying tree. Many of you don't even understand that there was nothing wrong with you. It was just something wrong with what you were connected to. Let me go a step further. Maybe it was who you were connected to. Did you ever think about the timing of God when it comes to an apple? That it goes out on that limb. And when it goes out on that limb, here it is, it doesn't have much of a support system. It just hangs there. It hangs there while it's getting heavy. Many of you are hanging on by a thin thread. And you don't even know how you are still up when you thought you should have fallen by now. There was something about the timing of God that would let you fall even though you looked right. Because what apples would testify to you who are watching is you are not fully ready and developed until you fall. And most of you who are outside of the animal kingdom, you think your living is being attached. And you don't even understand. You ain't ripe until you fall off of what you grew to be connected to. And I want to bring that apple in for a testimony because my time is up and I don't want your time to be wasted. My grandparents of sainted memory, Bishop Harrison James Bryant, Mother Edith Holland Bryant, living in Baltimore, behind their house was uh, acres of uh, apple orchids. And uh, we used to go there often and um, uh, invariably my grandmother always had a dish that had apples in it. Didn't even make sense. She's putting stewed apples in oatmeal. Putting apples in pancakes. We would have apples with catfish. Because she had apples in everything. My sister, who's the earthy one of our group, um, contested as a protest of one. Why are we always eating these apples? It didn't matter that we had orchids of them. It didn't matter that they were in short supply. It didn't matter that they were in a limitless abundance. And my grandmother said something um, now over 40 years ago that I just remembered in preparation for this moment. She said, Taman, in a maternal, patient voice, you think the apple is birthed to be on the tree? Do you think the apple was created to just be on the ground? The apple was created to be consumed. My grandmother said, what I've got to say to somebody who is watching, have you ever thought in your entire life you were born to be consumed? That you were created to be cut up? You were created to be a part of somebody's main dish. You were created to be where it is that other people will eat because of your life. And I never thought about it until I thought about the cross. And I realized that watermelons don't grow on trees. When I realized that bananas can only sustain for five days, when I realized that onions will only make you cry. When I realized that tomatoes are always in the wrong category. But an apple never falls far from the tree. So when it is that Jesus was hung on that cross, he had to redeem what was done in Genesis chapter 3. Because man lost because of a bad apple. But man was found because he redeemed the earth because of his sacrifice. I am mindful that many of you are not going to like it. 
But God told me to tell you, this is your time to be consumed. And out of immaturity, you're putting up your defensive wall. You have locked out your ear. You can't even hear what I'm saying because you think I'm talking about being taken advantage of by people. But God says if you're going to be consumed, consuming fire, sweet perfume. I know some of you don't like it, but I'm telling you, fresh fire is getting ready to consume those who want to be used. Many of you will never get filled because you are users. But those who are prepared to say, God, everything I went through in my life was so that the Holy Ghost could consume me. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself away. God said, this is not your time for getting. This is your time for releasing. And I'm wondering if there's anybody who is available for the sweet Holy Spirit to descend on you and to consume you like fresh fire. I'm not asking God for a car. I'm not asking him for a house. I'm not asking him for a job. I'm asking him, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. If you don't want it, you ain't got to get it. But I'm not going to wait to get back in church to get the Holy Ghost. But I need the Holy Ghost now. I need his presence now. I need his fire now. I need his passion now. If you are prepared to be consumed, I need you to lift up that hand. It's getting ready to fall in your living room. It's getting ready to fall in your bedroom. It's getting ready to fall in your kitchen. Where would I be if he didn't love me? Where did I be if he didn't care? Where would I be if he didn't sacrifice his life? But I'm so glad. Hey, I'm so glad he did. I need you to open up that mouth. You get ready to be consumed. Hey, I said you get ready to be consumed. I speak baptism by fire that some of you in this moment are going to have the evidence of speaking in tongues. I need you to open up your mouth. I need you to cry out unto God. Your prayer language is about to kick in. You are about to have a garden of Gethsemane moment. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Any way you bless me, I will be satisfied. Hey, I need that hand lifted. Oh my God, I feel glory here. I feel his glory here. I feel his presence here. Come on, cry out. Come on, cry out. I need you to lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your son. Lay hands on your daughter. Lay hands on your sick husband. Lay hands on your wife. I'm telling you, fire is getting ready to fall. Let me just hear the sound of worship. Come on, cry out unto him. I want to be consumed. 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 Take me back to where I first believed. I want to be consumed. I want to be consumed. Your awesome presence fills this 
I speak the fire of the Holy Ghost consuming you in this moment. Holy Come on, that's what I'm looking for. Come on. Glorious voice activated. Holy I said the glorious voice activated. This is I want you to make your living room an altar. I want you to make your bedroom an altar. Come on, I want you to bow down before him. I want you to worship him. I want you to avail yourself to the move of God. The Holy Spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it's coming from and you don't know where it's going. But I need him to fill me afresh and anew. The pandemic took something out of me. The last 16 months have been one of the worst of my life. But God, I'm sick of just holding on. If I'm going to fall, let me fall into your will. This is the time for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. This is the time for the move of the Spirit. This is the time of the evidence of the gifts of the Spirit. I'm sick of the church only praying for material stuff. Who wants the grace of God? Who, who wants the fruit of the Spirit? God said this is the time for you to step out on spiritual giftings. I want you to lift up that hand. In the spirit realm, I'm, in the spirit realm, I am anointing you afresh and anew. That whatever you lay hands on, Hamasha. Whatever you lay hands on, the gift of God is going to give evidence. I wish I had worshipers in this room with me. I said, whatever you lay hands on, God is going to give you tangible, definable evidence. I want you to open up your mouth and just give God a barak. I need you to give him the sound of a worship. Whatever you speak, I said, whatever you speak, revival breaking out whatever you speak it is about to come to pass this is the hour to be consumed come on this is this is come on wave that hand walk around your house anointed lay hands on every door lay hands on your bedroom Lay hands on your refrigerator. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Come on, bow down. So come Hallelujah. Bow down. The church was incomplete in the absence of the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why it is that uh, a few months ago we celebrated the day of Pentecost, the birthing of the Holy Ghost into the church. Pente is 50. I want those of you who are surrendering yourselves to the will of the Holy Ghost, to the will of the Holy Spirit, to the will of the glory of God shrouding around your home. I want you to partner with me. I want you to partner with me in sowing a seed of 50. I want you to do it right in this moment. God, I want to be used by your glory. I want to be used for your glory. I want you to do it right now. Here it is. I'm, I'm not talking about no business. I ain't talking about no job. I'm talking about assignments. I'm talking about destiny. I'm, I'm talking about calling. I don't care about no business, God. It's God getting the glory out of your life. You'd have made time for everything else. And you have not made time for what you were born to do. What you were born to be. I want you to sow that seed right now. Give the five push pay. Text the kid. I don't want you to hesitate. Can you imagine? Watch this. That people think you're a doctor because you're just walking through the hospital laying hands. 
Can you imagine people think you're a millionaire because you opening up your house feeding the hungry kids in the neighborhood? Can you imagine God blessing you in such a way that God will give you a word of wisdom and knowledge for friends of yours that are going through travail that you don't have the natural inclination to walk them through? That's what the power of God is about to do in your life. That the spirit of discernment is getting ready to stand up. I want you to have that kind of flow. I'm telling you, something is wrong. And those of you who are visiting, I'm telling you, I don't want to get you in trouble at your home church if you don't go here. But something is wrong if the only person known it at your church is the pastor. That's right. That's right. You didn't hear what I just said. I said something is wrong if the only one anointed at the church is the pastor. The pastor's job is to replicate that oil. The oil starts in the head, but it's got to get down to the skirts of the robe. It is vain glory and idolatry. Yeah. If I think I'm the only one that got it, that means I am not functioning in authentic ministry. But every time I turn around, there ought to be somebody who is rising up from the shadows that says, I got that same level of anointing. And I'm believing that that's what God's getting ready to do for you. He's getting ready to do for your life. Those of you who... Um, Realize that it's time for you to be a part of a ministry that believes in the Holy Ghost. Need to be in a ministry that has the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Those of you who believe, watch this, that you're tired of playing church. But you want to see the church at work and in full bloom and operation. New birth is that kind of church for you. I'm telling you, we, we do it all over here. We speak in tongues and then don't speak to each other. We do it all. I, I, I want you, please, I want you to join the church. I want you to be a part of our ministry. I, I want you to be aligned with what I believe that God is doing in this season. I know that you thought time was about you. But I want you to make time this week for the Holy Spirit. I want you to add into your prayer list that you will be available. I need you to, I need you to take this in. I need you in your prayer time this week to pray, hear this, without talking. I need you in your prayer time this week to take time to hear God. He done heard what you got to say, what you want, what your concerns are, what your issues are. But you are a rude conversationalist because you talk and you never pause to hear what he has to say. I want you to take time in a concerted way to hear what it is that God is saying about your life what he's saying in this season and what it is that God is getting ready to make manifest. I'm excited. I can't wait. We're going to be together in person. Labor Day weekend. Mark your calendars. Rev your Indian engines. We're getting ready to go back in. But until such a time, I'm going to be where I am and I hope you'll be right where you are. As I always do, I'm praying for you. I'm believing God for you. I am excited about your future. This is not my day. This is Pastor Carla Stokes Day, and never, ever, ever confuse Baltimore with D.C. Whatever you do, do not confuse Baltimore with D.C. I'm telling you, in D.C., they got go-go music. In Baltimore, they got house music. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. In D.C., they got mambo sauce. In Baltimore, they got Obey. I can't hear nobody. And so I am grateful. My sister from down the Beltway is with us on the day. I'm grateful for her. She's going to give us our benediction. And I'm appreciative that she doesn't stand alone. But her tree is with her. I'm telling you, good fruit always comes from a good tree. Help me thank God for Pastor Stokes. Oh, bless the Lord. God is so good. Come on, if you receive that word today, can you just thank God? God doesn't waste our time. Come on, give it to him better than that. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. New birth never wastes your time. I don't want you to come back to church next Sunday by yourself. No, we're not in the building for everybody, but right where you are, make sure you invite somebody else because they need to hear about divine time management. God is giving us a word in season for our right now. It's a kingdom word that not only you need, but your children and your neighbors and your co-workers and everybody else. Well, I want to thank God for this time that we've had together here on this Sunday morning to worship the Lord together. And God is never failing here at New Birth. He's always birthing something new. This is a kingdom move, a kingdom ministry. It's a kingdom a mandate from God that's on this ministry right here. And so I hope you heard what Pastor Bryant said.
God is wanting you to use your time wisely. Four years ago, my spiritual father died. Bishop Betty L. Long, just a few months ago, my natural father passed on and went to glory. And I don't know how much time I have left or you have left, but make the most of your time. Give your all to Jesus Christ. If you've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus, make it today. This is the best time ever. And if you need a church home, this is the best church ever. Do you agree with me? Come on, type it in the chat. This is the best church ever. And you say you haven't been to all the churches, Pastor Carla. How do you know this is the best church ever? I know because it's the best church for me. I've been here 18 years and I can tell you this is the best church for me. This is the best church for you. It's the perfect place for you to grow in God. And we'd love for you to be a part of our family. Well, I'm not standing here alone. I have my um, family member right here with me who is the closest to my heart. My dear, sweet, anointed mother, Dr. Almeida Stokes, is here with us today from Washington, D.C. And every time that we part, whether it's on the phone or in person, she always prays a prayer over me. She does the same for my sister. She does the same for many of our family members. And so I asked her if she would do the honor of pronouncing the benediction today. And as she pronounces this benediction over you, just like she does over us, I declare that God's grace and favor will be with you always. So mom, can you give them what you give us, please? May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. God, be gracious to them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give everybody here peace. Amen, amen, and amen again. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to your great name, oh God. To you alone be glory, honor, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Let the praises of God rise. Hallelujah. umbilical around her neck. She is really, really smart. She's been smart since she was a little girl to the point where she only went to private schools and she excelled so well in her studies that they tried to skip her a few times. And I know new birth has a wonderful person in color. So I just wanted to say that I want you to know that whatever uh, you would have her to do, I'm sure she does, and she does it with all of her instincts, education. She's just a blessing. I had no idea that my sister would become a great pastor, uh, but God has had had other plans for her. I thought she would stick with music, um, but God had other plans for her, and, and for that we're, we're grateful to God for. I am so proud at, to see a female, a woman of God, who is just so happy as my cousin, get up and declare the word. That blesses me every single time. And let me just say that I am so thankful that Pastor Bryant gave her the position of pastor because she has been walking in that for so many years. I can remember when my husband 
got ill and subsequently passed away, she stepped up to the plate and she did all those things that a pastor would do 